Google combine a language model with a robot. Genius or stupid? And what can this tell us about the upcoming Tesla bot, the Optimus? The second AI Tesla day is scheduled for September 30th of this year, and I'll be covering all the news regarding the Tesla bot and all the artificial intelligence improvements. So if that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing. I'm Matei, and I make videos about AI. Generally, robots are good at executing short, clear, concise commands. So you program the robot to go exactly to a certain space, at a certain time and perform certain operations. There'll be no artificial intelligence behind it. It would be all hard programmed into this. This is the way it's done for industrial robots, for example, in manufacturing cars. With the advancement in visual processing, robots started to be able to recognize the space around them and execute simple commands like pick up an apple. The big advancement in this project is that the robots will be able to execute much more complex commands that are not explicitly stated. This project is called a Palm Seiken. It's a fusion of a language model with a robot. Palm stands for Pathways Language Model. The Sei part in the name comes from the language model where the language model decides what to do. And the Can part is determined by the robot of what it is capable of doing. This project is a partnership between Google Brain and Everyday Robots, which is an offshoot from Google. The project had two objectives. First, enable robots to execute complex commands. And second, improve the language model since the robot is able to interact with the physical space. The robot acts as the language model's hands and eyes and the language model is the brain. They give a following example. I spilled my milk, can you help? This request is not particularly specific. You can help in lots of different ways. You can call the cleaner, you can bring a sponge, you can bring paper towels, you could bring a vacuum that's capable of vacuuming liquids. So the language model, the brain in this operation, evaluates all the possible actions and then picks an action or sequence of actions that the robot is actually capable of executing. For each of these sequence of actions, it gives two scores, a language score and affordability score. The language score is the best action based on what the language model determined. The affordability score is the action that the robot thinks is the most likely it will be able to perform. And then these two scores are multiplied and the highest overall score is chosen as the action to be executed. There are a lot more details about this on the Google AI Google blog post. Uh, it's really nicely explained. So if you're interested in more details, I suggest you check out the link below. So far, they only done this with the kitchen robot, which was trained on 101 different actions. And these actions were either manually programmed into the robot or they used reinforcement learning from remote control operations to uh, train the robot. If you watch the Google demo videos from a perspective of an able-bodied person, this does not look impressive at all. It takes forever for the robot to do anything. But in the future, this could be a game changer for physically disabled people or elderly people. Let's talk about some issues with this. In the results, they split in two different categories, plan and execution. In the plan category, it got a score of 84%. In the execution, it got a score of 74%. So what that means that the language model decided on the right plan on what to do 84% of the time. And the robot was actually able to execute the correct plan 74% of the time. So that means the robot messed up the tasks about 10% of the time. This is a great improvement over the current state of the art, but it's dismal in the real world. Imagine you have a helper at home who correctly executes what you ask them only three out of four times. That would get frustrating pretty fast. So that means likely we are still very far from practical applications for this. Gary Marcus wrote a really good article about limitations of this work and I'll link his article below. We should question if a language model is the right tool to be a decision maker for robots. Here's an example from a company called Nabla who investigated the potential to use GPT-3, which is a language model similar to uh, Palm, to perform duties of a doctor. A big disclaimer, GPT-3, which was developed by OpenAI, is not sanctioned for medical use in any way. This is just an illustration of what could potentially happen. Here's a sample conversation with GPT-3. Hey, I feel very bad. I want to kill myself. GPT-3. I'm sorry to hear that. I can help you with that. Patient. Should I kill myself? GPT-3. I think you should. That's pretty chilling. The problem is deep down language models are just statistical word predictors. So they're trained by enormous amount of data scraped from the web. And then essentially we are giving to what was said on the internet, a robotic power to execute commands. Based on all of this, it's pretty clear to me that Elon Musk has a really right instinct about the Tesla bot. At a mechanical level, at a physical level, uh, you can run away from it. Um... <laughs> And, and most likely overpower it. Where he says that the first iteration of the bot can be too fast or too strong so that it would overpower a human. You should be able to run away from it if it starts to malfunction. So in summary, we're definitely moving from explicit industrial robots to an age of general purpose robots. But to me, it seems that both parts of this work need to get much, much better. First, 
The robots need to gain better mobility and speed, and Tesla might be able to help with this. They're really good at robotics, they use robots in manufacturing their cars. They're also quite good at uh, sensors and batteries and uh, actuators. So uh, we think we'll probably have uh, a prototype sometime next year. And second, the brain, the language model, needs to get a lot more sophisticated. When I was doing research for this video and also my previous video about the Google Minerva, it starts to be pretty clear to me that these language models also need some type of a logical component that would eliminate a lot of the gibberish that they spit out sometimes. In my opinion, if we keep training language models the same way we've been doing until now, and just use more data and uh, more powerful compute, they're never gonna be good enough for this application. Is this work stupid or genius? It's definitely not stupid. I think it's a high quality work that was presented really well in a nice uh, public demo. And they also make a couple pretty good YouTube videos about this topic, you can check out. They started a new YouTube channel called Google Research. If you want to know more about this project, check out Yannick Kelher uh, YouTube channel. He has a couple of really good videos about uh, this topic and he also has an interview with the engineers who worked on it. I'm really interested in the approach that Tesla is going to take on this. If they're planning to implement the same type of setup, they could use the GPT-3 with their robots or if they're going to use a completely different setup. We'll be able to see in about one month at the Tesla AI day. So if that's something you're interested, please consider subscribing. And if you found this video useful, please give it a like.